How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I want to give a brief overview of this really simple build with the FX6. We're doing some gimbal stuff over the next few days and we'll be using the new RS3 Pro and one of the biggest reasons I upgraded from the RS2 was specifically for the ability to fly the FX6 because the arms have a lot more clearance. I know it is possible to run the FX6 on the RS2 but I haven't personally ran it with that configuration. So here's the camera body um, and it's pretty much stripped down all the way. As you can see, it's super teeny and light, and that's one of the big reasons why I love this camera so much. And that's because it packs such a big punch in such a small body. The only accessory that we're gonna be using is the Bright Tangerine top plate here. And that's great because I still have a few mounting options on the top here. And since this is essentially just a natal rail, um, that means that I can use their side bracket here. Um, to attach extra accessories like a timecode box or a transmitter since I'm not using the stock side grip. We are losing out on the audio inputs from the top handle, but the nice thing about the FX6 is that it has the timecode port here, um, which hopefully should put all the sound folk at a little bit of ease. So I'll just be running the stock FX6 monitor for this setup, which I actually quite like. The top plate here actually has the same hole pattern as the FX6 monitor bracket, but it's weird because it actually doesn't thread itself into the holes. It's not a huge deal, but I did find it a little bit strange. So as I thread this in, you can notice that I can still totally move this around, um, even though that, you know, you have the kind of locating pins here and you have the same kind of design here on this quarter inch 20 but even as the quarter inch 20 threads in the locating pins don't actually engage um, so this kind of i wouldn't say it spins freely but it's not as secure as something like an airy locating pin So that kind of leads me to my next point about this side bracket from Bright Tangerine is that it's super nice to have all these extra mounting points um, right on the side of the camera here, but it is also comes with a little bit of a trade-off and that's because it does make it a little bit more difficult to access these side ports here. Since I'm not using the stock side grip, it's not a huge issue to just leave the mounting bracket right here. But if I were using the side bracket, I would have to slide this over a little bit. And that does a really good job of actually shielding a lot of these ports, but it also makes it damn near impossible to insert or remove, say, an SDI cable into these connectors with this plate kind of covering it. I have tried leaving the left field base plate on the camera so that I could still have a kind of airy standard dovetail quick release, but it made the camera a little bit too tall to balance on the Ronin. So um, you could probably solve this with a few counterweights on the bottom, but I'd rather just not add any more weight than I need to. So I'll just skip it. Instead, I'll just be using the stock RS3 plate. And this time it comes with the more extended version, which is really nice. So that's what we'll use. So for this build, I'm gonna be using the newer 24 to 70 version two. Um, I'm a really big fan of this lens because it has a much closer focus. It's significantly smaller and lighter, which is a huge plus for gimbal builds. And the newer XD motors are just super responsive. Basically in a lot of the newer G Master lenses, the focusing element is just zipping around on a track and delivers a lot more thrust than traditional systems. Granted, you generally don't want super snappy autofocus for video, but it is nice whenever I need to zap focus quickly to acquire a subject. I'll make another video detailing my autofocus settings, so do the YouTube thing and get subscribed. 
Another thing I really love about this lens and camera pairing is the breathing compensation, which I absolutely love. I always find autofocus with really bad breathing is super distracting, especially during interviews since the entire image is just constantly changing. Usually you have to drop a ton of dough on lenses with minimal breathing, but I think Sony's onto something by figuring out a solution towards the back end of things. And I just wish Sony would add this to more cameras like the FX9 or A7S III or even the FX3, but I'm not holding my breath. So here it is, the kind of final build on the gimbal itself. I just love being able to fly something like the FX6 on such a small and lightweight gimbal. Um, it is obviously a little bit heavier than a normal A7S, but it's kind of to be expected. It isn't an A7S. So some first impressions after using it for a few days, it flies like a champ. And I just wish there were some sort of camera control without having to reach up to the record button every single time with the FX6. The new auto lock feature is super, super handy when I wanna just set the camera down or just simply carry it from location to location. I used to never lock the arms on my RS2, but now that I have it on the RS3, I'm basically using it all the time. Like I said previously, the setup is a little bit heavier than you'd typically expect, and I wouldn't necessarily, it's heavy, but it also isn't super light. I'm mostly ever using this setup to capture really quick B-roll snippets, so there's never really a moment where I'm having to roll for a five minute plus take. I know a lot of people like using the Tilta ring and adding all the knickknacks and doodads, but I'm just simply not interested in adding a bunch of extra stuff to the gimbal that was designed for a lot smaller setups. At that point, I'd rather just use a regular Ronin 2, but hey, different strokes for different folks. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. Overall, I'm really happy with the RS3 Pro. And again, my main reason for upgrading was being able to fly the FXX, but all of the newer, smaller features are just icing on the cake. Shout out to Nick Carter for getting involved in the comments section on my last video. So slide in my DM so I can send you out some new Is That A Red stickers. If you want some for yourself, leave a comment down below with hashtag is that a red. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.